Okay, welcome everybody. And a very happy uh, Thursday virtual lunch hour to everyone. Uh, now I see you, we've, we've still got some people logging in, but we are going to dive uh, straight into it. Um, and I know the next session on the agenda is scheduled for uh, 2 p.m. Eastern. So we do have a bit of time, uh, but equally we wanna give everyone uh, you know, a bit of a chance to, uh, to get away from their screens. Uh, before the next session. So we'll, we'll dive straight in as people keep joining us. Um, now, first off, I, I want to give a big thanks to the folks at, uh, at Dermfoot. We've, we've done several of these virtual events now, uh, these virtual conferences, and I can tell you they're, they're not easy, um, but the folks at Dermfoot have done a really phenomenal job uh, in putting this together. So uh, big thanks and a big congrats to uh, Annette and Joel and Brian and Nat. Um, you guys deserve a lot of credit. Dr. Brody and the team at CME Online also for, for, for doing this all behind the scenes. Uh, big, big sort of kudos and thanks to you guys as well. Um, job well done. Uh, now, by way of introductions, uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Pete Turnbull. I'm one of the founders of Sertia, and we are the U.S. providers of Swift. Uh, I am joined on this panel by my business partner and co-founder, Chris McNamara. Welcome, Chris. Hi, everybody. Very nice to be here. And uh, and more notably, uh, no offense to you, Chris, uh, Dr. Rob Cononello from Orangetown Podiatry. Rob is uh, Rob's one of our longest standing Swift users here in the U.S. Um, and he's also now an avid wart and microwave enthusiast as a result of Swift. Uh, so welcome, Rob, and, and thanks for being here. We, uh, we really appreciate it. Oh, uh, thank you. I think I've reached my pinnacle with that introduction. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Never know where your career will go. Uh, <laughs> Wart and microwave enthusiast. That's got to be the tops. Uh, okay, now a couple quick um, housekeeping items. Uh, this session really is designed uh, to be uh, as interactive as possible. So more engagement we get from the audience, the better. Uh, you'll see two things on the control panel uh, in various places. You're going to see polls that will pop up when they get released. So we ask everyone to answer those when they get they get brought up. Uh, number two is going to be questions. So if anyone has any questions, that's what, what Chris really is here for. Um, he's going to be answering question, questions as we go through. If certain questions uh, come up in frequency, then he can interject and, and bring them forward as well. So please encourage you. Uh, we'll try to get to them all as we move through. Um, but do ask questions as, as we move through, if you have any. Um, now, next thing is prizes. Uh, we do have a few prizes that we are going to be releasing at the end of this session. So a uh, little motivation and incentive to, to stay tuned. We're going to be raffling off a Chromebook. Uh, we've got uh, Uber Eats vouchers. And we are also going to be releasing our code for the, uh, the scavenger hunt. Um, so yeah, incentive to, to stay logged in for the session, which we do have scheduled for, for 60 minutes. We're gonna try and get through it all in that time. Uh, apologies if we do run over, but um, we're gonna try and keep it to, to time. Um, now, biggest reason for you though, to, to stay, stay tuned in and to, to pay attention is really what we're, you know, why you're here and why you're attending the session uh, for those of you who are registered with, with their input. Uh, and that's to learn. And it's to learn about new technology, new therapy, uh, and it's to learn about how you can improve patient outcomes and practice outcomes. And we're going to do that through the lens today of warts. Uh, so universally, one of the most challenging and frustrating conditions to treat, whether we're talking about uh, the, the folks we work with in podiatry or in dermatology, universally, this is one of the most frustrating conditions to treat. And for good reason, Rob's going to go through that with us in a minute. Uh, but we wanted to start that um, the session by getting a sense for whether this is a shared sentiment with the group we have on today. Um, so, Dr. Brody, if you could release the first poll question, um, that would be great. Just to get a sense for how frustrating this condition is. And I may have switched over uh, the actual screen. So if you could answer that while you could, um, that would be fantastic. And we'll give you a second there. Dr. Brody, if you could close that poll, that would be excellent. Perfect. And then we'll actually go back to the second poll question. Um, if we could release that next, uh, that is going to be 
uh, getting a sense for what sort of wart treatment volume we see. So how many wart treatments would you estimate you deliver in a given month? So if you could take uh, a second and answer that question for us, gives us a good sense of, um, you know, the, the scope and the size of the problem. And, and that's really what we're dealing with is we're working with the problem um, and we're going to talk about turning that problem and that frustration into uh, confidence. Okay. So the way we're going to do that um, is we are going to talk through the following items. We're going to talk about microwave science. We are going to explore skin immunity uh, and the condition profile for warts. Uh, we're going to talk and understand the current treatment landscape. Rob, uh, Dr. Cononello is going to work us through all of these. And we'll talk about uh, microwave therapy as a treatment option for plantar warts. Uh, very new, innovative therapy. Uh, and we're excited to share some, some really exciting case studies uh, that Dr. Cononello has, has brought together uh, over the past 18 months. Lastly, I will come back in and we'll talk about swift commercials. So we'll look at how you can generate profit uh, and new patients through your practice with, with Swift. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to you, Rob. Uh, the virtual floor is all yours. Okay, well, thank you and welcome. Uh, and I wanna thank Dermfoot. I, of course, wanna thank my team uh, at Sertia. Um, It's a pleasure to be here. It's kind of amazing because I just walked in from seeing 20 patients and now I'm sitting at my desk going to give a lecture, so welcome to 2020. I guess this is how we roll nowadays. So uh, it's all good. So we're gonna keep this casual, we're gonna keep it fun. Like Pete said, let's keep this interactive because that's the best way to do this. So, um, you know, when we talk about treatment of rookus lesions using microwave, you know, it sounds like, well, that's, and I saw the poll question already, it said at least 60% of the people say, yeah, they are frustrated by it. But, you know, in my life as a clinician, you know, I'm not looking for improvements. I don't want an improvement in how I deal with my, my problems. I'm looking for a breakthrough. And I think breakthroughs are the, the whole theme of what we're gonna talk about today. And it'll maybe give you a new perspective as to um, what we do at, at SWIFT. So, uh, and I apologize if I have a little bit of, uh, I'm having a delay here, Pete. I'm not getting my slides to move, okay. That's a problem. Sorry, guys. Uh, <laughs> right. Technical. Well, I'm, I'm controlling the uh, the screen, so you just you just let me know if you can see this or not. Perfect. Now I could see. All right. Right. So, um, all right. So we got this picture here. It says the wart. So this, and I was during this quarantine time, I had the opportunity to clean out a lot of my stuff at my office, and uh, I came across this. This was a a little paper written by then a five-year-old Kyle Cononello, who's my uh, now 18-year-old son. And uh, you could see he was writing this story about this thing that he had on his foot and called the wart. And I'm not gonna go through each uh, piece of this, but it's a story and from a child's eye and child's perspective about what I had to do. And what I did for Kyle is that we actually um, excised his lesion, but um, if you go, oh, the story can go through. How about that? Yeah. So, you know, as we go through the story, I can, you can next, you go know, to the next, next picture there. Um, one of the things, next picture, is uh, you'll see that there comes a time when he sees me as this guy coming at him with a sword. Next picture. Um, and this is what he sees. You know, I, I, I actually had to give him an injection. He was frightened. He was scared. Uh, the, you know, and this is my son. So this is the perspective, not only of a child, and I can imagine what it was like for a parent who comes in, because I'm sure I've terrified other kids besides myself in my 30 year career. Um, but this is what he remembered, you know, and how, how frightened he was. Next picture, you can keep on going through. Yeah, so at the end of it, he said, you know, uh, I fixed him and I had to make him better, but uh, I'm, here I'm carrying him off like he was a wounded soldier. So that was his perspective, you know, and that's how we, you know, treated warts plenty of times, especially those ones, those recalcitrant ones that we can't get rid of. Next. And next. Okay. Um, so like we said, you know, our objectives today were like Pete said, we we're going to be talking about, you know, the microwave science. And um, I think the funny thing about that is that, uh, you know, in going through college and going through medical school, the two subjects I always found a little bit challenging were physics. So here I'm going to try to explain to you about microwave science. 
and the other one was immunology. And we're also going to talk about skin immunity and uh, and condition for profile for warts. So um, I think that's kind of funny. All right, let's talk about microwave energy. Let's dive right into this physics part of it. So when we when we think about microwave oven, excuse me, when we think about microwave energy, the first thing we think about are ovens, right? So I had a, a, a patient just last week who came in and I said, hey, I'm going to use microwave uh, science to try to help this. And the kid was like, you're going to stick my foot in an oven? I'm like, no, but it's, you know, so it, microwave energy is much more than that thing that sits on our kitchen counter. You know, uh, microwave energy is really just part of the electromagnetic spectrum that you see here. And, you know, we're familiar with light, you know, light has photons and it bounces and around in different directions. So microwave is just a, a different frequency. So, you know, it's important to compare where microwave lands on that spectrum. Um, and if you see, you know, if you look on the right hand side of the of this uh, of this chart, you'll see there's things like gamma rays and and x-rays and and those are the damaging ones those are the ones that in you know can knock off bits of dna and they can cause damage um but microwave doesn't do this microwave is on the left hand side um kind of in between things like radio waves which we're very familiar with and infrared um you know microwave is basically just uh, something that gives a, a thermal response to the material itself um, and microwaves have been around for a really long time. We use them for communication, uh, we use them for measurements, and obviously we use them for uh, cooking. Um, so, you know, it's a very superficial and a very accurate form of energy. Um, and the really cool thing about microwaves is that, you know, microwaves are basically the same size of the bodies that we're putting them into. So the, the people who developed the Swift product, they had in mind you know, doctors like ourselves, you know, so it was almost made specifically for pods and derms to deal with lesions like this because it's an ideal uh, uh, mix together. Next. Okay, so let's go back a little bit more, just trying to compare microwaves. So, you know, like we said, on the right hand side, we see that microwave oven. And, you know, if you look at a microwave oven, that's putting out a thousand watts of energy. That's, that's meant for cooking, right? We're not trying to cook anything here. Um, we're not trying to stick our foot in the microwave like the kid thought. Um, but if you look on the left-hand side, things like your mobile phone and your Wi-Fi and your Bluetooth, they're also a microwave form of energy. They're an antenna. And just like the Swift, it's a basically an antenna um, that delivers energy. So like your mobile phone's around about two watts, Swift goes up to about 10 watts. So we, we our energy is much lower. It's, it's more like taking your mobile phone and putting it on your foot than it is in putting your foot in a microwave. So you know what we're trying to do is we're only trying to penetrate to about three millimeters of depth. So we don't need high, high energies, but we do still need to, to get this warmed up. Next, please. So like, like Pete was saying at the very beginning, you know, warts are, are frustrating, warts are tricky. Um, and they're, they're frustrating to the patient, but they're also really frustrating to the clinician as we saw from that poll question. Um, so I'll give you a perfect example. You know, this picture on the left, this is Charlie. He's a, a long-term patient of mine. And um, Charlie's an interesting individual. The fact that when he was six years old, he was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis. And, um, you know, he, he's immunocompromised. He actually has been lucky enough to uh, have a double lung transplant and he's actually doing quite well, but he's still on immunosuppressant medications. So, you know, he's compromised and he unfortunately um, has gotten hundreds of warts on both feet, as you can see. But, you know, he's still living his life. And, you know, my practice is based around sports and sports medicine. And Charlie's a really avid cyclist and a competitive cyclist. And he would say to me, hey, doc, you know what? I got these things on my feet. Not only are they embarrassing, you know, my girlfriend kind of has to look away when she sees them, but I'm, I can't do the things I love. You know, I can't, when I cycle, it hurts. It's uncomfortable in my bike shoes. So what can we do? So um, we'll talk about Charlie later on, but uh, Charlie was a very interesting case, that's for sure. Next. So, um, I, I wanted to, I was lucky enough a couple of years back to give a lecture at the APMA national meeting and my, my 
topic at the time was misconceptions in sports medicine and myths that we might have in, in sports medicine. We were talking about things about um, motion control shoes and ice and you know, things that we've done all the time just to make people think. Um, and as I was giving this lecture, I finished up and it was a Q&A &A at the end and um, a more seasoned um, podiatrist got up to the microphone and he said, Dr. Connell, I think everything you're saying is wrong. He said, everything that um, you know, I've been doing for the last 40 years works. Like, oh, good for you. That's great that it all worked. And he's like, yeah, but you know what they were saying is wrong. So I'm not saying it's right or it's wrong, but I said, I just want to open your mind to think of other ways. And he's like, um, no, 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 it's, you, you shouldn't be saying these things because you know, they, they do work. And I'm like, well, do you want to come up here and talk? I'm going to give you a point of view. And he was like, no, nah, I'd rather not. I'm like, okay. And he started to continue to heckle me. And I finally said, um, hey, you know how science and medicine evolves? I say, I said, when the older scientists and doctors die. So I don't think I'm getting a Christmas card from that doctor. But, you know, I think the, the moral of the story is to realize that there's an old way, there's a new way. And um, in order for us to change and to evolve, sometimes we got to take a chance and try something different. So that's what we're going to talk about today and how we can, you know, maybe look at things a little bit differently. Next slide, please. So, you know, we all know about plantar warts, right? A really super common problem. You know, we see commonly in younger kids and teenagers. And for the most part, you know, they do pretty well about, you know, taking care of them and getting rid of them on, on an a, a easy basis. But there are some obviously in our teens and um, that are persistent. And you definitely see them in adulthood too. And um, when you see them in adulthood, they've been around for a while and the HPV virus knows how to survive. Um, you know, there was actually a, a study that was done in the British Journal of Dermatology that said, you know, nearly all adults, they say here, 41 percent, will acquire a wart in their in their in their lifetime. That's that's pretty significant. So, um, I know personally, I never had a wart in my life until I be became a podiatrist. So, you know, you when you come in contact with them, you probably will see them a little bit more. But, you know, so there's a great chance that everyone's going to have a wart. So it's a really common thing, which is interesting, too, because I get a lot of uh, clinicians who say, I don't see a lot of warts in my practice. And I, I, I say, I, yes, you do. You're just not looking for them. So um, and when you start having different tools in your toolbox, you might look at the problem a little bit differently. Next, please. This was a um, another uh, another uh, um, article from the British Journal of, of Dermatology, and what they did it was like a, a survey that they did, and they looked at all different um, ways of treating warts, and you know the most co most common ones that we see are usually like salicylic acid and cryo, and you know what they went through and they said well salicylic acid gives about a 60% success rate and cryo about a 50% success rate. But if you read down further, and if you guys see down here, it says, however, data from systemic reviews show plantar warts are less likely to respond to these therapies. Adults can expect to have them on average of five to 10 years. That's significant. So the reality is, is that it's not 60 or 50 when it comes to the podiatry world. It's much, much less. And um, you know, th those therapies that we're talking about have been around you know, for the last 75 years. So um, it's maybe time to look at something different, you know, and, maybe, and that's what we're here for today. Next, please. All right, so let's get back into this immunology part. And um, I want to thank Dr. Ivan Bristow from, uh, from the UK. He is the person who's been the educator to all of us about everything warts. And also want to thank him for uh, letting us utilize many of his slides. These are many from his collection. So, uh, but he, you know, he always talks about um, this, the process like, like this. You know, we know that, you know, we get small breaks in, in our skin, especially if you're talking about young people or athletes, you know, they perspire, their, their skin breaks down. Um, and these microbes, they enter the skin. And when they get into the skin, the, the proteins act as an antigen. And, you know, they have uh, these antigens on the surface receptors. So, you know, as they get in there, they're detected by the main dendritic cells in the epidermis. And those are called the Langerhans cells. So the Langerhans cells 
um, is are kind of like the police. This is what Dr. Bristow will say. And you know, the 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 antigen is the criminal. So you know, these policemen and these these Langerhans cells are patrolling. They find the antigen. They they bring it and they bring it to the uh, the lymph nodes and they bring it and they present it to the CD8 lymphocyte. And that's kind of like your judge and your, the judge there. That it says, all right, you live or die. And if it says, all right, we're going to die, you're going to die. What it does, it tells the T cells to um, to uh, duplicate and clone, and they're kind of like your special forces, and they're going out there and they're going to trigger an immune response, and that's how it usually works. You have a common cold, you have things uh, that are caused by viruses, and it usually, you know, your immune system works quite well. Next slide. And this is just kind of shows in, in, in the form you see on the right-hand side those uh, antigens getting in there, and there you see the Langerhans cells um, picking them up, you know, in the epidermis, bringing them to the, the T cells, and then um, they clone, and they go out and do their thing, and it works pretty well. Next, please. But then there's the wart, okay, and, and the HPV. So, you know, contrary to normal skin conditions, you know, the H HPV gives us like a unique challenge. They're very stealthy. They they know how to survive. They they they, they will continue going. Um, they actually produce a protein um, that suppresses the ability of the Langerhans cells to do what they're supposed to do. So the Langerhans cells can't detect the virus, um, and it becomes like a protein viral pathway, uh, which lets it persist and go on for a long, long time. Um, and this is the problem that Swift tries to attempt to solve, and it does solve it. It kind of uncloaks um, the HPV virus to produce a natural immunity. Kind of, it says, "Ha ha, there you are, and now we can do what we're supposed to do." Next, please. So, like we, let's go back a little bit. We'll talk about the current wart treatments that are available right now. Um, they, like we said, they haven't changed for many, many years. Some of them have been around since the 1800s, uh, but most of the more common ones that we would deal with on a daily basis, they've been around for 75 years. And like we said before, they're not very successful in getting rid of, rid of warts, especially those persistent ones. Um, they become very disappointing. Things like cryo and sal acid and cantharidin, you know, that, that's something that I used for a while, but every time I would use it, I was afraid of getting a call in the middle of the night of someone telling me that their foot smoking and there's a huge hole in it and that they have an ulcer. So I hated doing that. You know, lasers were are so unpredictable. Um, and surgical excision, like we talked about from Kyle's story way back when, uh, is, tra is traumatic, it's dramatic, and um, it doesn't always give the, 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 the outcomes that we would hope we would see. Next. So I love this quote, if you only have a hammer, you tend to see every problem as a nail. So if you only have the certain amount of things that we've been using all these years, um, we're gonna keep using them over and over again. You know, the other quote I like to say a lot of time, the, the problem is not the problem, how we deal with the problem is the problem. So we have to find a, a better way of dealing with this problem. And we do, we have it. Keep on going, Pete. So here's another thing from Dr. Bristow. You know, he's British, so of course he loves Harry Potter. Uh, and he, you know, Harry has this cloak of invisibility. So HPV has able to do that. It's able to cloak itself from the immune system. Um, the, you know, the HPV infected cells activate a, a pathway, it's called the the PI3K pathway, which downgrades the Langerhans cells and suppresses them. So it doesn't allow them to work and see. So, um, and we do know, however, though, that that PI3K pathway can be downregulated um, with hypothermia. And that's where SWIFT comes into the picture. Next, please. So this is like the, the a key slide. You know, it's the slide that speaks to how SWIFT works. Um, you know, the, the SWIFT basically what it does when we're we're talking about um, using SWIFT, we're not talking about heating things super hot where we're kind of destroying tissue. And that's kind of what we're used to when we think about like uh, those kind of uh, heating type of modalities we've had in the past, like laser. Um, th this is not doing it. This is going below 50 degrees Celsius. When you go above 50 degrees Celsius, that's ablation. That's where you're destroying, causing a, a real thermal effect. Um, microwave is non-destructive. Um, it doesn't destroy the lesion, but it gets to the root cause. It affects the virus. So, in very simple terms, the, you know, the microwave essentially uncloaks the virus. You know, we go between probably about 43 to 46 degrees Celsius. That's probably the 
the temperature of a really warm hot tub. Um, you know, once we're able to heat it up like that, we get this cascade of release of things like the um, heat shock protein 70 release. That heat shock protein 70 release um, doesn't allow the, the, the wart to do what it normally does. It uncloaks it. It also sends up, you know, inflammatory modulation um, and just basically kicks in the immune system and lets it do the things it's supposed to do. As if we recognize a virus interferon is released. So, you know, all those kind of things are normal uh, for immune modulation. You know, that's that's the key. That's the key slide to remember here. That you know, microwave just from heating, not by ablating, is going to set this whole cascade into effect. Next, please. So Dr. Bristow, he um, decided to do a study and his study was really pretty cool. Um, he did this study in his, uh, down here in Southampton in, in the UK. And what they first did is that they took skin samples and they radiate these skin samples with microwave um, as well as utilizing cryo. So, and then they would look at them under a microscope and see what happened. And what they noticed is that the ones that they irradiated with microwave, um, that heat shock protein 70 that we talked about that helps with the uncloaking, that was released when you heated it. Um, the interesting thing, there was no cellular change at all when they, they used cryo and they froze it. Um, which kind of makes you think, you know, and, and you, you start reading further and further and you realize that if, you know, in the labs, when they want to like save samples of HPV, they freeze them, they keep them cold. So why are we using cold? You know, we talked about the ice age at the very beginning. Why are we still in this ice age? We have to think about using heat. Heat will try to help heal this. So that was the first part of it. They, that was kind of really cool for them. They said, all right, now let's take this into the clinic. So what they did, and they said they, they're going to go and look at um, a, a, a bunch of individuals, and they took individuals who were like the worst of the worst who had warts. They took uh, people who had lesions that were an average time of 5.3 years that failed multiple treatments. They didn't have kids in there because they knew that the kids' immune systems were kind of robust. So they really wanted to take the most recalcitrant lesions that they had, and they said, let's see what happens. Next, please. So what they noticed, they said, um, and this is where the theory of immune modulation was demonstrated. They saw that over these 54 warts that they had treated, that um, the clearance was, was almost two to three times higher than other destructive modalities. So they, they had a, oh, close to a 76% clearance rate, which is great. That was significant, um, that's a significant uh, change. Um, the other thing that was interesting is that he was really, really stringent in how we would say what was a pass or fail. So, you know, one thing they looked at was dramatic lifics. How did the wart look? Were they getting normal skin lines to that wart? Were they still having pain? Um, was it still painful on pressure from lateral side to side? So they were really, if it didn't, if it wasn't in there, they would, they would say it was a failure. They also had people that said they didn't follow up. There was one person who said that it was uncomfortable, so he didn't come back. Um, three people withdrew, withdrew. So like that 76% number was even much higher than, than that. So that was a really, you know, that was exciting for him to, to, to have this study and then and, and move forward. So that's what, that was the first study. It was pretty, pretty, pretty cool study to have um, your first time out. So that was great. Next, please. So what is the treatment protocol for SWIFT? How do we do it? You know, um, it, it's pretty simple. Basically what we do, we have the patient come in um, and we, we usually put our settings about eight watts and we uh, hit the lesion for two seconds, five times. So 10 seconds altogether. You know, if they have multiple lesions, we kind of go in for the, the largest lesions or if you have a mosaic, we might have to overlap, and we'll show that in a second how we do that. Um, but you know, I think a, an interesting thing here too is that um, one of the a study that we've had since is that we also realized that when doing this, that we the resolution rate long term is 83%. You know, uh, I think we I think Pete can ask talk about this later too. I think we have a 13,000 patient clinical follow up that said. Um, you know, there's one percent recurrent rate. That's that's tremendous. I mean, that's that's real change. Next, please. 
Yeah, so this is like I was talking about before. This is me in my clinic right next door. Um, and you know, here we show that the, the SWIFT applicator, um, the end of that applicator is about seven millimeters in diameter. So sometimes you'll have lesions that are larger than that. So you, you know, like you said, you could try to overlap those a bit or like, or, or more importantly, just try to go to the largest of the lesions because like we're, where we're doing here is we're, we're, it's an immune response. We're not trying to kill every little thing. We're not trying to burn lesions out. We're just trying to heat it and set our own immune system up. So the, you know, the interesting thing about that is that we've had patients who've had lesions on their finger, on their lip, on other, on their elbow, and those go away too, uh, just because you're 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 dealing with it in a different way. Next, please. So, what are some of the advantages of Swift? I mean, like we said, it's super fast. Ten seconds. Um, the patients are in and out in, at your office very quickly. Easy to use. It's um, a, a learning curve is very is very simple. Um, but the thing that I love the most about it, the device is predictable and repeatable, meaning that it's evidence based. I could tell a parent, I could tell an individual, an adult, look, we're going to do this on you today, and we're going to get rid of your wart. Okay, I I'm bold enough to say it's a cure. You know, it's not a treatment. This is a change. We're going to get rid of this because we've seen it over and over again. We don't have to use anesthesia. As a, as a matter of fact, I tell you, you shouldn't use anesthesia. There's no need for it. There's no smoke produced, so you don't need a, a specific filtration devices or masks or anything like you would use with a laser. There's no dressings um, um, and there's no downtime. So, you know, in my practice, I'm dealing with a lot of athletes. So, you know, if they're going out and they want to go running, or if they're a swimmer, they don't have to be, ha they don't have to have duct tape on their feet and uh, special bandages or uh, or anything that would kind of embarrass them anymore that they're, they're they have something on their uh, on their foot. Next, please. So let's dive into some of my patients. Um, this is patient A. So this is where one of the very first ones I did. This was back for, uh, of of. April of last year. So this is a 14-year-old boy, and he had a three-year history of this kind of mosaic warts that were between his toes. He had very sweaty feet. He was active, um, and he had unsuccessful treatment for about a year of using sal acid and cryo and imiquimod. And um, the, the person who did the unsuccessful treatment was me. So you know, I knew it wasn't working. I was trying my best, and this was. Uh, a guy I went to high school's son, and I was like, I can't get your kid better. I don't know what to do. We tried everything we could do. So, and we finally said, you know what? Let's try something different. And we tried the Swift, and he was seen, you know, beforehand, he was being seen like every two to three weeks for debridement and, you know, we were putting the medication on. And, you know, they were getting a little frustrated too because they were coming in all the time, pain, co pays, and they really weren't getting any better. Um, and the kid was getting frustrated himself. Um, next, please. So we said, all right, we're gonna give our, our eight watts, two seconds, five times uh, per site. And like, this is one of those ones where we had to use that overlap technique. Um, and we did it for uh, three treatments over three months, spaced four weeks apart. And um, and, and we, we did our treatment. Next, please. And this is at the 12 week point. You could see that we had almost complete resolution at this time. There were still some, some lesions here. Um, this, was only, this picture was taken only after two treatments. And um, I did see him back a few months later and he has totally resolved. He has nothing there at all. So he was so excited. The kid was you know, really happy because he didn't have to deal with this anymore. And, uh, and I was happy to tell my friend that I didn't have to see him anymore, uh, at least in that setting. Uh, next, please. So this was a, another interesting one. This was a physical therapist. He's uh, one of the physical therapists, he's a sports physical therapist who sends me lots of patients. But he came to me and he said, doc, you gotta help me out, I'm running. And this thing was also between his toes. It's just killing me. It's been around for about a month on his second toe, he goes, I start running within the first half mile, my feet, my foot's burning. I don't know what to do. I'm trying all different types of socks and pads, but it's just killing me. You know, these guys in really good health. Um, you could see he tried to go to town on this himself by using sal acid and, and uh, home cryo, and uh, his pain level is pretty high. It was about a five out of 10, um, but nothing seemed to work. So he said, all right, let's, let's 
try Swift on you. So um, we lowered it a little bit for for him because you know when you get to a distal aspect like a digit, the skin's a little thinner. So we went down to six watts, two seconds, five times. Um, and next, please. And you could see here after this was one treatment. This after the one treat, four weeks later, he had complete resolution. The cool thing about this, though, I, I mean, I'm close friends with this therapist. He called me up a few days later. He goes, you know, that wart's still there, but I don't feel anything. My pain is gone. So that's the first thing I see with my patients is that they tell me the pain is going away. So that's how I know it's starting to work. That's that's great. So. This was great, and he still sends me patients, which is great. <laughs> Next, please. Okay, so this is an interesting one. This was another one that was early on. This was March of last year. So this was another athlete. He's a 44-year-old healthy athletic male. He's a, his golf club champion, um, uh, really, really uh, competitive golfer. He had a two-year history of this lesion. It was a pretty large lesion, a two and a half centimeters by one centimeter. And his pain level was eight or nine. So here this golfer comes in, he goes, Doc, I'm walking the course and this thing is killing me. Sometimes I can't stand over my putt because all I'm thinking about is my throbbing foot and nothing's getting better. So <clears throat> over the time, I once again treated him for two years uh, with conservative care and, and sal acid and debridement and cryo, imiquimod. Um, I did monthly debridement for one and a half years. I even tried needling this um, and that didn't work. And then I, it was a large lesion, but I excised it. I sent it out for pathology and it came back as a Veruca and Toto. Um, he cleared it up and then another two months later, it came back. So, and it came back with vengeance. So here I was really frustrated. So um, I said, okay, we're gonna, we have this new, new, uh, therapy to treat you with and we, he said yeah I'm in let's go for it so for him we did eight to ten watts because it was pretty thick I went up even a little higher to ten watts two seconds five times next picture please now you look at this and then we did six applications and you can see as we go along here nothing's getting better I, I don't I, I, I'm like oh man Swift is failing me this is not good um, I'm considering this a failure uh, and I went to him after six times doing this, and I'm like, hey, Kevin, I'm sorry, but I'm going to maybe have to refer you to a dermatologist because I cannot figure out what's going here. And he goes, I, I know you tried valiantly to try to get me better, but uh, I, I totally understand. He was cool about it. He goes, you know what? The, the most important thing, though, Doc, is it doesn't hurt me anymore. So it hasn't hurt since we did that first treatment. I'm like, all right, that's great. All right. So I said, well, good luck, and we'll see what happens. Next slide. So then lo and behold, he calls me about three weeks later. He goes, Doc, I got to send you a selfie. So he sends me a foot selfie and he, and, and he goes, look at this. I said, come on in. I look at it. And I'm like, oh my God, this thing is actually going away. We're starting to see normal skin lines. He says, I have no pain. Um, and then a month or two months after this, he came back and again, it totally resolved. And I see him all the time um, golfing. Uh, I don't golf as well as he does, but I, I do see it and he's totally pain-free and, and wart-free. So the moral of that story was that sometimes we just have to give it more time. And if I was to look back at things I probably would have done differently, uh, I probably wouldn't have done six treatments. I might've done three or four and maybe just given it more time. And since he was a little bit older and he had this lesion for quite a long time, it was a large lesion, we needed to be a little bit more patient. But you know, the, the key there is that you know, it wasn't hurting him anymore. And that's the sign that, that tells me like, hey, you know, things are, are improving, things are getting better. Next, please. Okay, so this was a, a, a more recent individual. This was an eight-year-old female. Uh, she was a level five gymnast. She's a super cute little girl who was so embarrassed about her bumps on her feet. And, um, you know, but she was really competitive and she, you know, goes to gymnastics five to six times a week. She was finding it really difficult to do some of the things she wanted to do. And, you know, her parents were taping her feet and putting band-aids on her feet and they were trying to use compound W. And if you, when she was doing things like the beam routine, 
she just felt uncomfortable because she had these lesions or she had tape and she wasn't able to do what she wanted to do. And she was, the parents are also concerned as they should be of spreading this to others at, at the gymnastics studio. So um, she had a total of 15 lesions on both feet. Um, so what we decided to do is do Swift for her and we did eight watts, two seconds, five times. And at this time, um, since I was still in my learning curve, I did every lesion. I did 15 lesions. Next, please. And they went away. They went away after two treatments. Um, she had complete resolution. Um, next, please. So yeah, that, that was dramatic, a dramatic change. She's super happy. She um, came in and did a, a little video for me, which was telling her how happy she was. Um, but you know, that changed her her life, you know, at that time she was, you know, now she's able to do something that she loves to do her gymnastics and not feel um, embarrassed or in pain when she's doing any of them. So, you know, that the, the lesson learned with this one was probably I didn't have to do all 15 lesions. I could have just done the larger lesions and they probably would have went away as well. Next, please. So we back to Charlie, right? We talked about Charlie. So I saw Charlie right before quarantine. He came in and um, I remember calling up uh, Pete and call, calling up uh, Gary uh, Beal, who's the inventor of the Swift machine, as well as Ivan. And uh, they looked at this and they were like, Oof, that's a tough one. And um, they said, go for it, but good luck. It's probably not gonna work out that well. And these are from the, the guys who've seen the worst of the worst. And I was like, Okay, and basically because of his immunocompromised status, you know, this is the guy with the double lung transplant um, who was taking suppressants. So I saw him and I did um, two treatments over that area, eight watts, two seconds times five. Um, and I saw him, if I remember right, it was uh, February, beginning of February, beginning of March, and then we go into COVID. So I lost touch with him, you know, we didn't know, he didn't want to come out obviously because of his status. Um, and then next, please. He sends me a selfie and they said, come on in. And as you can see on the left, that's what it looked like. Uh, and now you can see on the right, resolved, gone. Those little marks you see there are just uh, almost like a, a, a scarring at the very beginning that are fading away. Um, seen him since as well. And those are all gone. So two treatments on the worst possible patient that you could ever imagine and it went away and even though the creator of the of the company said good luck with that and it still went away so lesson learned is that you know this is a this is an innovation this is something totally different this is something that you should really consider next please yeah, I like to talk about, you know, innovations, right? So uh, being a sports guy, I always say we have to be a game changer. So if you know anything about track and field, um, the high jump is a really tough thing to do. Um, and back in the days, they used to go over with a scissor kick in the late 1800s, and then they would roll and they would straddle. And then this nerdy guy from out in California, Dick Fosbury, who decided, I'm going to go over backwards. And I'm a, and he's an engineering student, and he said, I'm going to change my center of mass and go over this way. And um, he won the 1968 Olympics in the high jump. And since that moment on, everyone goes over the high jump his way. So he was an innovator. I think everyone is going to use Swift in the future because it's the way to go. It's time to change to, in order to take that chance in order to see a difference. So that's my part of it. I want to now turn this over to Pete who's going to, and, 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 and Pete's going to tell you what search is all about and, um, and how you can incorporate this into your practice and be as happy as I am. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you, Rob. Um, and, and thank you for being a, for being a game changer uh, and an innovator. Um, I tell you, as a young company, so we launched in January, 2019. Um, you know, at, at the start, we only had data coming out of the UK and we had some data coming out of Australia. Um, the company's been around since 2016, but uh, so we had we had some pretty good, you know, global data, but nothing domestic. And so you you really do have to rely on innovators um, to sort of set that standard and to take that risk. And, and there were several people at the Dermfoot conference last year who did that as well. So thank you to all those people, and and thank you to you, Rob, uh, for being one of those innovators. And 
and, and being able to to deliver that uh, to your patients and to to help set the standard for uh, for Swift. So really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, okay, so I'm going to take the next 10 minutes, uh, 10 to 15 minutes, to talk about Swift profitability. Um, so recognizing we're going to try to wrap this up at 1.30. I'll go fairly quickly through this, uh, not expecting everyone to grasp this fully, um, you know, as we work through, but just to give everyone a bit of a sense uh, as to how the profitability works, because I think it is important. First thing I always say with profitability is that clinical always comes first. So it's, a, it's why, you know, we dedicate the, the vast majority of this presentation to clinical. All of the profitability is driven by clinical outcomes. So it's the fact that SWIFT works when other therapies don't that allows all of the profit models to work. Um, so that's why, that's why we set it up that way. Now, uh, having said that, it's really important, I think, I think for anybody on this call who is contemplating, you know, becoming a SWIFT user, right now you're working in an environment where you don't have a device that delivers a treatment you're delivering. Um, SWIFT is a cash-based therapy. So the current therapies that are being delivered are being reimbursed. So, the, the, you know, there's question marks, right? And you have to understand what the cost of the equipment is. You have to understand what that's going to cost you each month. And then you want to ask yourself, how do I avoid this being a bad decision for me, right? So how do I look at the worst case scenario to make sure that I'm at least going to break even on my investment? And then potentially, you know, what, what could be the upside if I start to see quite a few patients? Um, so we'll try, and, we'll try and cover those, those questions. Very aware that those are, you know, those are important questions to answer. We can't just tell you it's great and, and go buy one. You got to understand how you're going to actually uh, make money with it and how it can impact your, your practice from a few different, different angles. Um, now, um, what we want to do here, Dr. Brody, if you're able to, to put up the next poll question, that would be great. It relates to, to cash pay services. So if you could all just take a minute to, to answer that question, um, because it is something coming out of, uh, actually COVID that is, um, we've seen a lot of interest in, uh, this, this concept of adding, uh, cash pay modalities into the practice. Um, if you could close that one, that would be great. Uh, and then the next question is, uh, are you currently looking to add new patient flow into your practice? That's another sort of key element to, uh, to the SWIFT model. So if you could take a second to, to answer that question, uh, and apologies for my family photos in the background, but that's just something that's happening. Um, yeah, those are two kind of key key areas that we we like to build on with Swift, um, and we can close that poll down now as well. That's great. Um, so I'll I'll speak through the the key bullet points here. As I mentioned, it's a non-ablative therapy, so it falls outside of destructive CPT codes. Okay, so it's a cash-based therapy. It's a key component. We'll talk about how that impacts things in a minute. We get higher profit per treatment and per patient. Uh, conversion is the key to this model. So the big question mark when we launched was, okay, great, this technology looks really cool and exciting, and it sounds like we're getting some really, really good outcomes, but how many people are willing to pay cash for something like warts? And that was a question that we really had to answer just through, just through data, uh, just through experience, for people like Dr. Cotonello and, and some of the early adopters who, you know, who, who had to put this to their patients and, and, uh, and to see what happened there. And we're really happy and pleased to report that we're seeing some very, very strong conversion rates. The average right now is around 70%. Um, so, so that's, that's what kind of fuels the, the profit and we'll, we'll talk about that. Uh, we'll talk about patient flow being a key factor and how we as, as partners um, in the process help with that. Uh, and then uh, ultimately it, it comes back to, to resolution and, uh, and when SWIFT works, uh, it's amazing, you know, what that can do to your confidence and, and to your overall ability to, to convert patients. Alrighty. Now I'm going to walk through step-by-step, step, uh, the, the profit and, and the cost, uh, elements to, um, how, how you can make money with SWIFT. So the first component to that question mark is your lease payment. So 
we almost always lease the, the product, the five year lease to own, there's a dollar buyout at the end. So that monthly cost is at list price is four ninety seven. Now we have a, a discounted price point that we're offering everybody on this webinar. So we'll talk about that in a minute, but let's be as conservative as possible and let's go with that highest price point. So for all intents and purposes, consider it to be uh, $500 a month. So that in your head, that's the question mark. How do we generate enough treatment margin to cover that cost, okay? And that's what we'll talk about here. First question is, what's the average treatment charge? The average treatment charge uh, per treatment for Swift is $250. It sort of ranges between 200 and 300, the average being about 250. We subtract from that 250, $65 for the disposable tip. Rob mentioned there's a disposable tip. Um, I'm just gonna show you one here. Um, this goes with every treatment and that is a $65 disposable. So that leaves you with the practice that the per treatment profit of 185, um, which, which we look at on a, on a per treatment basis. We then multiply that over to our average number of treatments, which is three. And that brings us then to a average profit per patient of 555. And those are two metrics I just want to cement home. So when we think about things in tangible terms, the question mark in terms of how do I make sure this isn't a bad investment for me is can I do three swift treatments in a month? Or from all the patients that have come through my practice with warts, can I get one of them each month to say, let's do the swift? Right now we're getting 70% conversion. So now it's kind of a matter of, of, of how many wart patients you, you'd see in a month. So that's where that wart volume starts to, to come into play, okay? Now, this is a fairly busy slide. And then, and then because we've already run through the, the, the model in the last page, I won't dive into too much detail here. But this is uh, an example of the theoreticals behind SWIFT. And when we look at uh, a more conservative model, this is kind of the, the, the theory that we apply to SWIFT. And we look at averages. So 100 ward patients per year is a fairly average number for us when we've surveyed across our practices. And if we take a really conservative estimate of 50% uptake, which is lower than what we normally see, we end up with these profit numbers. And again, it's not critical to dive into it, but what we do like to highlight is that it's important to also consider not only are we able to generate on average sort of in that $28,000 worth of profit level, um, but you have to consider that that's uh, $28,000 as compared to what you could have done, right? So it's a $20,000 increase. Uh, bottom line is when we get patient conversion, SWIFT can be very profitable. Okay, so let's not get too bogged down into the details. Happy to discuss this with you on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Um, it should, I should highlight here actually that year one tax benefit. So being this time of year, uh, important to note that you do get a tax benefit that's roughly about $9,000. Okay, um, we talk about uh, sort of worst case and best case scenarios. Um, I wouldn't even call these you know, worst or best, but we, we looked at our lowest performing clinics in terms of volume and then one of our higher performing clinics at this stage just to give everyone kind of a sense of where things kind of tend to vary and what we're trying to highlight here is that at a lower treatment charge and a lower number of patients per month we still see very robust financials so i think everyone would agree that 36 percent roi for a year-on-year -year basis is better than any financial product that i've seen in, in my lifetime uh, if I was a podiatrist, I'd be very happy to be presented with that financial option. Uh, sadly, I'm not. Um, but we can see as things go up, we start to see that you know, those numbers increasing. Um, at this point, um, Rob, just quickly, how many patients do you think you're treating per month at the moment? I'm probably treating between 50 and 75. Right. Okay. Brilliant. And, and conversion-wise, um, what percentage do you think you are at? I, I put the other way, the, probably the ones that don't go for it is 1%. Got it. And, and what, what would you put that down to? 
my confidence. Um, my, my I've put together a series of photos to show the individuals. Um, the, the the better I felt about it, the more that I learned about it, and the more that I saw with my own eyes, I was able to show them my passion. And yeah. you know, I'll give you a quick. I know we're running out of time soon, but I'll give you a quick story. I had a young girl who came in here, and I told the parents. Oh, this is what we could do. And they're like, oh, I don't know if we can really do it. And also we looked at the girl and she started crying. She was like a 13 year old girl. Like, why are you crying? And she goes, you don't want to give me the best possible options. What kind of parents are you? <laughs> so, you know, even a kid understood like this is the best way to go. So yeah, I, I think it's just my passion being like, really excited about this. Yeah, and we, cer we certainly see that at any time there's, there's almost a confidence curve with, with Swift because sometimes it does take four to five months to start seeing those follow-ups, right? And so at the at the initial outset, because we're not destroying anything, there can kind of be this, this waiting game of like, gee, I hope this is working. And then at sort of month four, month five, all of a sudden you start getting those selfies and, and that's when kind of the, the light bulb turns on, like, holy cow, this, this really is working. And then that confidence curve then starts to drive more patient conversion. So yeah, very, very common story. Um, okay, so if we just keep if we keep moving on here, the, the one thing I will notice again, fairly busy slide, but the the point here with this slide is to highlight that we don't want to just look at profitability on a per patient number. What we're looking at is is efficiency as well. So we talk about this being a very quick treatment or a swift treatment. Um, what that delivers is a is a more robust profit per hour. Uh, metric. And, and when we start to talk about practice management, those are the kind of metrics we want to be thinking about. So this is a quote from Rem Jackson, who says, bigger isn't better, bigger is bigger, better is better. Um, so what we're trying to do with Swift is is not just you know create more patients, but we want to create good patients, efficient patients, patients where we're not waiting on you know accounts receivable or that, that don't take hours out of your day to treat. We're also looking for patients that will tell other patients about the results they get, which which is a big part of why Rob is now seeing those kind of volumes. Well, I'll be honest with you. I, I'm sitting here right now. I just got a text from another podiatrist that said, I'm sending you two patients who need SWIFT. Can you get them in tomorrow? As I'm sitting here with you guys right now. So other doctors, other podiatrists are sending me patients. So why don't you guys just have it themselves? I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, and again, that's common. And that's common across dermatology and podiatry. Um, uh, dermatologists, in fact, are more so very open to just referring these warts on. Again, a condition they really don't want to treat. So that's a part of what we do as a partnership, which I think is actually a good transition into this next slide. It is. Um, so we'll talk about what this SWIFT partnership is. I know we're short on time, but point is we work with you to drive patient flow. So we talk about patient conversion being important, but overall increasing the number of patients is also important. So what we do is we invest in uh, direct to patient marketing. So, uh, Dr. Brody, if you could release that last um, poll question. Sorry, second to last uh, poll question number five. It asks, uh, do you currently invest in direct to patient marketing to generate new new patient flow? And this is kind of an interesting one. Um, so, we're really trying to get a sense as to, to where this is on people's radar. Sounds like it's something that people you know want to do, but maybe just haven't got around to doing. Uh, if you could if you could answer that poll question, that would be great. Um, and we can close that down now, Dr. Brody, as well. Uh, okay, so uh, back to this partnership piece. Um, this is the website that we run. We do direct to patient marketing to help generate that flow. And it's a big part of what we do. Um, and it's something that we're, we're quite proud of. Um, there is a huge opportunity in terms of an unmet need in terms of patients who self-diagnose, who are suffering with warts but don't know where to go um, and to you know to rob's point you know they're there we're just not finding them um, so what we do and, and this is a big part of our program the moment you become a swift user we put you on our clinic locator and we start running direct to patient advertising on your behalf so we pay for that and it's a budget we assign each month uh, to go out and target these people who more and more often are self-diagnosing over their mobile phone uh, we hit them with advertisements to bring them to a site, which educates them onto you know, the different treatment options that are available and ultimately sends them to your practice. Okay. We talk about the, the opportunity scope here. The data suggests that nine out of 10 people with warts will, will actually choose to just do nothing or stay at home. 
because the, the evidence suggests that that's probably the best thing for them to do, which we know is wrong. When we look at how many people are searching, this is a, a recent search that we pulled uh, from, a, from someone we were talking to recently. Uh, it, this is a practice in, in Massachusetts. Uh, and we looked at for all the search terms that we try to rank for, and the, on average, each month, there were 460 people within a 10 mile radius of that practice who were searching for those terms. So how do I effectively get rid of my warts? Wart on my foot? How do I get rid of it? Um, those types of monthly searches, uh, we had about 460 uh, on average, which was, was staggering. Uh, the question and the opportunity is um, is not only around finding those patients, but also being someone who can differentiate based on that. And this map is, uh, you know, it's we're, we're very pleased to have about 150 providers now using Swift in the U.S. But you can see there's a there's a significant opportunity to become one of the first providers in your region. Um, and this is something where you know we work with you on to to create that differentiation. Uh, and you should be rewarded for being you know one of the innovators in your area. Um, so we want to send patients, you know, to our SWIFT providers, um, and there is still a significant opportunity to be one of those who really stands out, um, you know, in your community. Okay, uh, last little pieces here. Uh, in future indications, the one that uh, most podiatrists are interested in is this onychomycosis study, which uh, we are now recruiting patients for. Very promising results on that front, uh, but but still, you know, a little ways down the road, we're still recruiting and refining our protocol for that, but that that, that looks very exciting. Uh, and we've got some other stuff in the works as well, uh, looking into some gynae and some urology applications, seeing fantastic and exciting stuff into pre-cervical cancers, head and neck cancers, melanoma. Um, it's it's a it's just an exciting piece of science that, uh, you know, it is, is kind of exciting to be a part of that. Uh, and podiatry has, are, is, has been the cornerstone for SWIFT um, with, with lots more to come. Okay, uh, we're talking about derm foot specialists. We mentioned a, a cost off the capital. Uh, for anybody who's been present on this webinar, we're gonna offer you $2,000 off the cost of that capital for the month of October. Uh, just remember the discount value or the, sorry, the discount code of derm foot. That is gonna be your discount code. So I'll bring that up if you're talking to a, a SWIFT representative. Um, as you go to, to acquire. Um, our final poll question is around whether you'd like to have some more information on SWIFT. So Dr. Brody, if you could release that, thank you. Um, so really here, we're just sort of asking if, if this is something that you're interested in, let us know and we can set up a, a phone call to talk about whether SWIFT would be a good fit within your practice. If you're not 100% sure, um, then we're happy to send some information along as well uh, over email. If that's the preferred route, we can start there. And if it's something you want to dive into, um, we can absolutely set up a phone call or a video call anytime to, to walk through it. Um, SWIFT is all about partnership. So it's about making sure that, you know, we have people who are invested in the technology and we're there to support you. Um, so looking for people who, who really share in that. Um, okay, Dr. Brody, if you could close that down, that would be great. Um, and now the last piece, we are on to our prizes, which I promised everybody. Uh, so we will get into this. Uh, so first and foremost, there's a few different prizes here. Uh, so I appreciate everybody who's stuck in and is, is still here with us. Uh, the first prize, uh, and we're gonna release them, I think all at once here, but the password for the scavenger hunt is ghost. So uh, write that down or make a note of that uh, for your scavenger hunt prize. I think we have an Amazon gift card that goes with that. Uh, Uber Eats vouchers, just to let everyone know, we are gonna be emailing those out uh, at following the session. So you'll see, you'll see those come through to your email address uh, if you're one of the lucky winners and the early registrants um, for that. And the Chromebook winner, uh, we've just done that raffle now and I am very pleased where is it? To report that Dr. Rick Mendelson, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, is now the proud owner of a Google Chromebook. So congratulations, Dr. Mendelson. Uh, and that really concludes our, our session for today, everybody. I, I wanna give everyone a big thanks. Um, and again, a, a thank you to Dermfoot folks and uh, to Dr. Brody and the folks at CME Online. Most importantly to, to you, Dr. Coninello, really appreciate you know, your time um, 
and uh, and your investment in in, in Swift. Uh, we we really appreciate you um, and everything you're doing for us. So thanks again, everyone. Have a lovely day. Uh, really appreciate you being here, and we'll hope to uh, speak to you soon. Take care. Thank you. Thanks. Bye bye.